Welcome to the second video of my Jakarta EE CRUD API tutorial. In this video, we are going to start with the first um, CRUD operation, which is create. So we'll have a look how to um, create new persons with our JAXRS API. And to start, I will first add the basic skeleton for our API. So we will use HTTP POST and as a result, we will get a response and let's give this method a name. So let's say create new person and return null for now here. And I'll switch back to our tests and we actually wanted to make test driven. So within our tests, we will now write the test to verify that once we create a new person with this API endpoint, um, we will get a location header as a response and get a HTTP status code 201. So the server will notify us that the person was successfully created. To now test this, we will add a new uh, test for this. Make sure to use the test annotation from JUnit5 as this project here is uh, running with JUnit5. And let's start writing the test. So with this test, we will verify it should create a new person. And what we can now do is like, um, we want to get the response from our um, resource. And as we're using MicroShed testing, we can inject here our JaxRS resource and execute or invoke our methods with will, which will in the background um, trigger Apache CXF client to actually call this against our running application. And let's for now assert here that um, the response status is 204, uh, 201, which is the first test. We first have to import it here. So we expect so the response to one is um, created and this should match the status we get from our API here. And here I've imported the wrong assert equals. Now it should work. And let's start. Uh, the application server here is already running. And if we now hit enter, it should now execute our test cases and it should fail. And as you now see here in the log output of the test, our API, as it currently returns now, it, it's transformed to a 204, which is uh, empty. And we are expecting 201 here. So it's the first thing which we can now fix. So actually we can make it here now created. And this created expects a URI location, which we will then later on use to actually re-query for our newly created person. To make this happen, we now have to inject the URI information from this, this request. This can be done with this add context URI info. To now construct this URI, we can create this URI using this URI info, which comes with a builder. And this will be then incorporate our current um, absolute path we are running in. So then we can say path and for now, we don't have any ID we will insert here. So we'll hard code 42. So later on here, we will add the actual uh, primary key of our person, which we just created. And then we can say build. And we can then use this URI here and pass it to our response. So if we save this and then re-execute our test while hitting enter, it's now failed because our method signature changed as we inject here the URI info. So we have to adjust it here. So we can pass here null 
and let's see if it compiles yes and then we can hit enter again and now our sh test should be green as we now make sure there's another different we now need here the status code actually so this was not testing the status code but this status enum so now the test is green and we actually verified that we that our endpoint returns 201 whenever we post a or whenever we create a new person let's write the next assertion to make our test fail and to actually implement um, more business logic for now let's um, verify that the location um, which is present in the response header actually contains our id of the user we create so we can get the location header from our response here and we can write an assertion let's say once we have this location header it should contain 13 this should now fail as right now it's hard coded 42 and we have to fix it um, to give it a proper output message we can pass in here a message which will be displayed once this test failed so within here we can write what went wrong um, so within here i'm just giving it a, a proper message so if we hit it again it should now not say that an assertion was wrong or false it puts out a proper message that the primary key should be present um, in this location header whenever we create a new person. So to now make this work, we actually have to make some adjustments to our method here. So what we now have to do is like uh, somehow we have to get um, data from the outside, which will be present in the request body. So for this, I will create a own class. Let's call it person creation request um, this class is a basic data structure which contains all the information we need to create a person so let's put in everything here we need to create a person and then also insert a constructor with all attributes and in addition to this also default constructor and furthermore we also need getters and setters for everything not just the id so once we have this we can put it in here in our method so juxtarash will then try to deserialize the request body to this uh, pojo what we can add here is um, some validation so we can use uh, bean validation here to actually make sure our uh, created or the person we want to create is actually valid so within here now we can use some bean validation annotations for the id let's first make it um, not negative so it has to be positive and first name and last name shouldn't be empty that's everything we need here we can now use this id here to build our uri for the location header properly so we will use the id we pass in here um, to the response what we currently are not doing is uh, actual we are not storing it to the database or to store it to the database we have to um, inject our entity manager uh, let's do this and as this here is a simple cdi class let's maybe first make it singleton make it application scoped and we need the transactional annotation to work within a transaction let's make it required here so each method requires a database transaction and what we can now do Maybe first, at, as with this example, um, the user is able to pass the 
ID of his choice, so the database won't pick the ID for the person. Let's maybe first make sure the person is not already present in the database, so we can't uh, recreate the same person with the same ID. This shouldn't be possible. So what we can do here is uh, write a simple if statement and check first if there is already a person available in the database with the ID which we get from from the request. So if this does not return null, um, we want to return a special response here. Let's say we return that request. So whenever someone tries to insert the same person with the same ID, which is already present, you will get a um, 400 bad request here. Um, to now actually store the user or the person, um, let's store it. For this, we have to somehow map it to our person entity. So we, we, we can pass this person creation request here to the constructor of our person and create a constructor for this. And here it's just mapping the values from one object to the other. So once this is done, we now have a proper person which we can use to store and for storing, we can now use the persist method of the entity manager and pass in the person, which will then uh, persist it to our embedded Derby database. Let's save this for now and switch back to our tests and see if it's successful. So right now here, we also change the structure of the method. So we need to pass in here the person request so first one with the ID, let's make it one and give this person a name. And as we pass in here one, our URI should now contain one. And let's hit enter to actually execute the test. One thing I forgot here, um, our person creation request actually needs a default constructor so while creating this i was maybe too fast let's put in here the default constructor so we can properly serialize and deserialize it if we now again execute our test cases our test case is green so our creation api endpoint is now working properly and we can create new persons and once the person is created we get the proper http status and also the location header is present. So we can then use this location header for the next tutorial where we will cover the read part of our CRUD API to um, properly read our entities with a dedicated endpoint.